All right, how's everyone doing? Hope you can see this back here. I think uh, I think this is going to be the standard for for women. Do some back and forth. Uh, Test fittings with uh, with whom that belongs, and then uh, then we'll set the pattern, and then we will have the men's line and the women's line, the standard for each one. You know? And then uh, we can move forward from there. Now, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope. Uh, these last few months of this year uh, will be tolerable. Uh, uh, when you say New Year and you consider what birth is, when you give birth to something, it is fresh, new youth. When we use the term new year, then we should go by the definitions of those two words, right? New and year, right? So new year would not start until what we call, of course, April's Fool. So you see, we, we, we use this term because they've given it to us. You, we use these dates because they've given it to us. So we can clearly go into our own books and see what we call years, what we call months, what we call days and things like that. But unfortunately, we're too lazy. We are the what? The spoiled slave, the home born spoiled slave. Why would we go through all that effort to find out uh, more information about ourselves? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Why take the effort? Now, I have not broadcast for a while, and I think this is an excellent topic. Why take the effort for each other? And that re that's really what it has to do with, right? Now we know there are tons of us, there's tons of also the people, the nations out there that believe many false things. Why go through the extra effort? Why? Now, you always remember, oppression drives a wise man insane. So while we deal with our insanity of being oppressed and understanding the technical things that happen behind it, i.e. two histories, let's move forward. All right, let us find the truth. What an interesting brother this is. Various, various. And since we're dealing with uh, whom, who are. Naturalization part two. The enslavement of Native people. On October 12, 1492, on the first day, he looked at the people, and this is what he said. Sirs, I, our Lord, being pleased, will take hence at the time of my departure six natives for your highnesses. These captives were later paraded through the streets of Barcelona and Seville when Columbus returned to Spain. From his very first contact with native people, Columbus had their domination in mind. For example, on October 14, 1492, Columbus wrote in his journal, with 50 men, they can all be subjugated and made to do what is required of them. These were not mere words. After a second voyage, Columbus sent back a consignment, a consignment of natives to be sold as slaves. 
What? Let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get that. Consignment. Sealing with a sign from consigned and meant. Delivering over. Uh, especially of goods for the sake of sale or auction. Right. So he delivered goods for sale. Now let's go back. Columbus sent back goods for sale of natives to be sold as slaves. Goods. The goods are the natives. So Columbus brought native, right? Now listen, scattered to the four corners of the world, the African slave trade. Now there was, uh, quote unquote, Negro shipped from across the world over here. But this is something that happens a little bit earlier. All right. And then it happens a little bit later, I believe. All <coughs> Arab Muslim uh, people, the ones that took over Mecca and so on and so forth, they captured a lot of Negroes and they castrated them and they tortured them and they slaved them out and they raped their women. All that shit happened over there as well. So there was a lot of bartering and selling of the Negroes even before all this. But you can see here clearly uh, from the uh, Carib Islands, quote unquote the West Indies in South America, you already have Columbus getting together a bunch of you Negroes to be sold back in Spain as slaves. Well, there's your slave trade across the Atlantic now, isn't it? Yet, in April 1493, letter to Luis de Santigel, a patron who helped fund the first voyage, Columbus made clear that the people he encountered had done nothing. Done nothing. Listen to this. Done nothing. They did no wrong. No. There won't no goddamn old mongoloid take mongoloid sent to fucking Spain as no goddamn slaves. Give a fuck. I'm telling you some real shit here. God, you need to. I've been to this. Go back to the video and look at who these Jews were across the world here in quote unquote the Americas. Look at their descendants at the same time. You know, look at these Negro people already fucking here. They did nothing to deserve their treatment, according to Christopher Colon. They did nothing to deserve ill treatment, according to Christopher Colon. Listen, people. Now, now, listen. He's trying to tell you something very specific. Over and over again, he keeps telling you, according to Christopher Colon, the only thing our ancestors did wrong that we can find any writings about is written in the Old Testament. We turned away from the Creator. Do you understand? Listen, I got to a point where I said, what's the point? Nobody's learned anything. Nobody's changed anything in their life. I made a phone call yesterday. I called this lovely couple I went to Washington, D.C. and protested. When I first started broadcasting, the broadcast led to the protest of the dumb diverses. I, I, I've been distant. And, and I've, I've, and I've desired separation. Do you hear what I'm saying? And I called these people just to say hi. And they had a guest over. And they put this person on the phone. And I talked to this person. And this person said that the wife had suggested that they watch. And this is what the person said to me. The person said, when I first saw, I couldn't watch. But something pressed on me. And I had to decide she, she used the word humble herself because her terms the the raw 
material that that is being discussed from from we we are taught is just a reject from society that she had to get over it. Now I was waiting for her to get to say, "Oh, the cussing, uh, 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 or, 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 or the or the screaming, or something like that." But, but no, the demeanor, the look, <laughs> and the feel. I, I suppose I have no idea, but she expressed it the best she could. But she said she had to humble herself to be able to watch. And once she did watch, and once she did put the image aside. And actually listen and read and study and turn it off and continue to study. She was able to see. And I said, I asked her a couple questions. Well, tell me something that you learned. And she did. And then she she told me something personal. She said, I believed in Jesus. I went to the schools around him as a subject and I went into these associations around him as the subject and what I've learned is that I have to come back to the creator you know how happy I was oh man that That's one stranger. Same family, distant, but because of oppression, stranger. It's been affected. And you know what was different about this conversation? Because I've had conversations with people and we've discussed what our heritage is. And, and when I have these conversations, hey, okay, what nationality are we? Well, I'm black, but they're not learning. See, see where I'm going with this? And I'm not bringing up this example to, to make to make fun of one and to high, uh, and and to raise up another. But someone's learning so much so it is changing their life and that's the real point we are to go back to the creator you can see the disastrous things that are happening now every week somebody's executing their wife and kids every week something is getting more and more out of control more death more destruction but we have technology, it's supposed to make the world better. More laws to kill you. More laws to let homosexuals urinate right next to your children. And you can look at it however you want from your own bias. You could love homosexuality, but still love God. You know, you, you can have whatever belief you want. But those words in that book say something completely different. It says, set the standard. For who? You are to be a role model to the people that have destroyed you as a people. You are to regroup and stand strong and worship him. If we get into these mentalities, we're going to go to war with them and kill them all. And we're just going to be ghosts. We need him. As well as each other. And this conversation that I had, it made me realize that we should be fellowship. You know, the people that are in the same states, uh, uh, especially the same major cities, you know, you know uh, we should we should get to know each other. 
because something's going to drive us out of here and fulfill prophecy that we walk out hissing and, 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 and booing. And when this happens, there's no there's no telling if if if, if these things are going to work. You know, the monolith. If if you're older, you've watched two thousand one, uh, and you've seen the monolith, and this is what it is. It's the remote control, you know, TV remote, same difference. Some device that you use for everything. Turn on the lights, turn on the windows. All right, let's get back to this. They give you these taboo voodoo stories to fucking scare your ass, but they know what the fuck they did. So, what we just left off is, the natives had done nothing to deserve ill treatment. So when we see later writings that they were, they were doing this and they were cannibals and stuff like this, this is Columbus's first letter. Columbus made clear that the people he encountered had done nothing to deserve ill treatment. So, where is what? Where, where does the writings of uh, they were eating each other and things like this come from? Well, that has, that's that's later writings. You understand? Once you start, once you write home and say, "Well, they've done nothing to deserve what I'm about to do to them," and well, then you have to make up something, right? Came over here and fucked with you and slaughtered you and took your shit and said all this boogeyman shit about you. Yeah, one more thing. Look, he said about the Aztecs that they did this and they did that. They even said, "Hey, we made some recent discoveries of all these bones, like 600 people." And the funny thing is, is what happened to the people that Columbus murdered of the Aztecs? <laughs> Who's to say they just didn't find those remains? And also, right, you're the fucking devils, this, that, and the other. But here, clearly, Christopher Colon is saying, but they're really peaceful, innocent people. They've done nothing to deserve this bullshit. But hey, you know, we want to get rich. They are artless and generous with what they have to such a degree uh, as no one would believe but him who had seen it of anything they have. If it be asked for, they never say no, but do rather invite the person to accept it and show as much lovingness as though they would give their hearts. Whoa! Seriously? More words from Columbus. Seriously? Seriously. You motherfuckers better look at your history. You now I need you to think about this. I told you many times that there are different nations of black people right now think about when you go somewhere and you've got that bag of chips and then somebody says can i have some and then even though you really don't want to give them any you, you do it anyway all right now think about how many times you've been with everybody and somebody else comes up with a bag of chips nollinators any it can't anything you know hey can i have no no you know Think about how they don't have that in their heart. And they look into your mentality, they look just like you. Right? And I think about that. Came and slaughtered relentlessly of uh, innocent people. Let's continue. I only got 10 minutes. Nonetheless, later in the letter, Columbus went on to say, Their Highness may see that I shall give them as much gold as they need and slaves as many as they shall order to be shipped. I'll send it back to you. N Listen. I'm going to ship the gold back to you, Isabella, and as many slaves as you would like, Isabella. Pope gives the Americas to Spain. Following Columbus's discovery, Pope Alexander the, uh, I don't know, four or five, issued a May 4th, 1493, papal bull. Six, Roman numeral six. Pope Alexander the sixth. Bull, granting official ownership of the New World to Ferdinand and Isabella. To these monarchs, the Pope declared, we of our own motion and not at your solicitation do give concede and assign forever, forever to you and your successors all the islands and mainlands discovered and which may hereafter be... 
Now remember, Spain and Portugal started going into what they call Africa. And, and, and when they saw the trade that was going on, they grabbed people and went back. Then this document was produced. This is why it says, oh, and wink, wink, and not at your solicitation. You didn't come to me and say, hey, make this right. But if you look, we, each of us that studied dumb diverses, we all saw that the action happened first, then the permission slip was written, and then Columbus brought the permission slip to America. Be discovered towards the west and south, whether they be suited towards India, excuse me, situated towards India, or towards any other part whatsoever, and give you absolute power in them. And let me throw this out there real quick. So since we're on the Pope, this just happened to pop up. It seemed, uh, this is what uh, he wants us to see today. This is Ed, and welcome to The Outer Dark. Yesterday, as many of you guys know who have subscribed to this channel, I found what can only be described as reptilian symbolism right at the heart of the Vatican, in the Pope's audience hall. So I thought I needed to dig a little deeper as to what this actually means and how to decipher the actual symbolism. So stay tuned as The Outer Dark brings you five symbolisms of the reptilian Vatican hall. Number five, first some context. Yesterday I found a giant serpentine monument in the Pope's audience hall, namely in Pope the Fourth's audience hall, or so it's named. The audience hall itself is made of reinforced concrete by an architect that was known for building bunker-like public structures, indeed monuments out of concrete. It was built in 1977, so it's really old in fact, it's been around there for a long time. But my first lead that something was strange was this window, and I said, that looks like an eye, it looks like a serpent's eye, so I dug a little deeper. And when I saw the audience hall from the back, where the back audience was seated, it really did take my breath away, since what was revealed was this right here. That is a giant massive reptilian face shaped into the direct architecture. So, look, they can say whatever they want. We can clearly see it looks like a snake. When we go into these different books of the scripture of the word, it talks about the serpent. Now. Everything from the slits and the eyes to the scales to the fangs, there was no mistake about it. But what's behind this hinted symbolism? And what can we see or gleam if we dig deeper? Well, number four, look at where the Pope is seated. We see him here from the back of the hall that is in fact seated in the mouth of the serpent or reptilian, in the very mouth. This is symbolic of the Pope being the voice of the serpent, in fact speaking the serpent's words to the audience. This might well shake your faith, that is if you're a Catholic, which I was. I actually went to Catholic school myself and was. So, I just want to take time to keep this video alive as long as I can. That's all you're doing, you know, when you flash these things on screen, you know, you're just uh, you're breathing a little bit of life into these videos, you know, it gives it a little defense shield, you know, within the laws that, that the Assyrians have created. Now look, uh, we can argue what we want. We're going, we're dealing with Assyrian law. Yeah, Syria is on the other side of the world, but this is what this is what it says in Isaiah. When Emmanuel was born, and he's just a signal. When he's born, his birth is a signal that the that the government would be on his neck. As this child gets older, you'll see him in court constantly. 
as an altar boy. But here you can see it in plain view, clear symbolism, clear evidence that something here is extremely wrong. This image hasn't been photoshopped. This is real. This is built right into the architecture that was designed by those within the Pope's inner sanctum. But there is more symbolism. For this though, we have to go outside. Number three, do you see anything strange here? You're looking at the hall itself. Do you see anything weird? Well, if you look carefully, it looks like the head of a giant snake. Can you see it now? In fact, it's almost unmistakable. You can see the snake's muzzle at the front and you can see its eye. It just looks like a snake. To me, this is yet more connective symbolism that what's going on inside matches the outside. Because since here we can see serpentine architecture with ease. Number two, let's head back inside and look at what the Pope himself sees. If the Pope is seated where he is, what does he see? Well, he sees a giant serpent with eyes once again. The audience is symbolic of almost the serpent's meal. And the Pope is not preaching to once again. The audience is symbolic of almost the serpent's meal eyes once again. The audience is symbolic of almost the serpent's meal. And it is symbolic of almost the serpent's meal. Serpent's meal. Serpent's meal. Serpent's meal. Serpent's meal. And the serpent's meal. Why? Because this is what the Pope sees. Can you imagine that when they were designing this, that they designed this all by mistake? This is some kind of high anomaly? No, because they spent literally years on the designs. They definitely would have known what the Pope would have seen from where he was actually speaking. Also, what the audience was seeing. So this is very strange and it raises some serious questions. Just what is going on in the hall? Number, Number one, one. But, the but the biggest clue, the, the biggest symbolism that tells us something is really, really, really wrong here yeah. is in fact what is missing from the hall, not what is inside it. Do you know what that is? Here is a clue. Now, think of the heart of Christianity and think of what symbol it has and think of what you do not see in this hall. You do not see any of it. That's right. There is no Christian cross. There is no cross in the entire building, at least no large statue, wall hanging or anything. There's no other real Christian symbolism either. There's no Virgin Mary. There's no Joseph the carpenter. There is indeed nothing anywhere. All of these symbols are missing. But you might say, what about that 10 ton bronze statue that's seated behind? Now, don't these look like skulls? Don't they look like teeth? But like they're fake, like we're looking at the back of a skull that was bashed in right there. Like that's the part where they were hit with a stone. You know, look at this one. Don't it look like the side of a face and it's facing this way? These are the eye sockets. You know, it, you know, it looks, okay. The Pope, where, as the Vatican states, Christ has been resurrected from a nuclear apocalypse or a nuclear bomb. To which I would say, this, I believe, is a direct corruption of symbolism. That is. A um, this, I, I, I would disagree with the author. I think this is the, the true image. Because the whole time, I think about the Christians. Do they uphold the Ten Commandments? They don't worship the Creator. They say this this Christ is a is the Son of God. I just say it's a Son of God because these fallen are sons of God. But once they fall, they break, they sever their relation. Have taken the former Catholic symbolism of Jesus, Jesus Christ, and they've displayed it in a corrupted manner, therefore corrupting its meaning. This is just not the way that you display Jesus Christ. Actually, you're not supposed to have any images. Isn't that true? Isn't, isn't that what that scripture says? No images. But yet these people the oppressor, they don't have the same God. That is why there is a second book stapled against our heritage. See, all this is about, you've got to understand, 
all this is about. Taking your inheritance. If I steal your father's stuff before I kill him, he's got nothing to pass on to you. You understand these people have what they call credit because their fathers, for the most part, passed something down to them that their fathers passed down from them and their fathers passed down from them that their fathers stole from you. Are you getting it yet? Okay, let's do this again. Your fathers used to own this land. Your fathers would have passed on the land to their sons and their sons and their sons and your grandfather and your father and to you. But they came and poisoned your families. Do I have to show you this again? When I say poisoned, I'm not lying. When you lived in tribes, they biologically infected you. Prior to that, when the Mayflower came over, what they said, they tried to teach them farming, but they just wanted to look for gold. Now, why would they want to just look for gold? Hmm, could it be because of the writings of Columbus? So when they couldn't find gold, what did they do? They started eating the dead. And then the winter came. And then they called for a great dinner. And that's where they poisoned the Indians during the toast. All right? These same types of Indians that Columbus came across. That he that he put into servitude. Right? That we call African slaves today, right? <laughs> like if they found them here, you know, I don't know if like they were closer to Africa. I mean they they from Africa. Come on, man, you just take out of proportion now, all these damn lies, man. Two histories. Alright, so in any kind of Christianic religious order. You don't display Jesus Christ with massive wings on his back, rising up from an atomic apocalypse. You just don't. Well, oh, yeah, you do. See, that's the whole thing. He is this son of God, right? All these other sons of God are angels, right? And they have wings. That's how you depict them always, right? So why wouldn't this one have wings? Because of your thoughts of them, your personal thoughts. And you see him as a man, and he's not. Don't do this. Look at representations of Christ from the past just to compare. Take a look. I don't know. Seems to be the same face to me. Now you can see that there's just a huge vast difference here. Something is profoundly wrong. I mean, this statue, which weighs 10 tons, just looks like some massive thing, like a boss from some video game or something from some horror movie. You just don't display Christ like this. And also Don't you see that? Look at his... Look at the Pope's guard standing in front of them. You know, this is game or something from some horror. This is the image, right? You can't beat that, right? That's that's really how it'll look. The fallen general leading the Pope's army against us. Remember that image? movie you just don't display christ like this and also note on this christ appears to have massive wings on his back half of his face also looks like it's missing like he's been heavily damaged by the blast is this really how you display jesus christ ask yourself that you don't even i i did i did i asked myself that and i have to say yes again i ask anyone where is this Jesus in the Old Testament? It is not Emmanuel, like it says in the 
so-called book of Matthew, the attachment, right? The parasite that attaches to the host. It is not Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a signal. Now, the angel of the Lord is not this Isus either. The angel of the Lord, when we go to the Strong's Concordance, is Malik. Malik, who seems to be somehow connected to Malachi. I will always suggest that we should read more. You even have to be religious. Just look at history and compare. So what is happening? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to continue to dig. You can be sure of that. But I think that this is significant and something really big has been revealed here. Something we found at the end of this trail of breadcrumbs, which started at a small pizza shop. Now, I'm going to say this. <coughs> when we have already seen people call the Catholic Church the mother of the harlot, uh, you know, um, then uh, you, you can see where this is going, right? You know, um, uh, when, when that's the mother church and what they prop up is this Jesus as their God, everything obviously connected to it. If we say, if we say Allah is false, when we go into literature, we can clearly see Allah is Azazel. When we say Allah is false. Now, look, your beliefs is your beliefs. But uh, most of my research I, I put up clearly for people to see. It was up for years. Now, the research clearly points that Allah is Azazel and, and that the, 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 the Moorish temple is connected to Ishmael. Now, when we see everything to deal with that is false, then why wouldn't we, on the other hand, say that everything that deals with, let's keep this simple, let's not make this rock your faith, everything that deals with the Catholic Church is false. And yes, once you deal with the Roman cross and the cross of this cruci crucified one, or uh, wink, wink and all that shit, wink, 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 then everything connected to that branch is false. So that means the Christians, the Catholics, the Baptists, the blah, blah, you, you, you can see this, right? What's... What's right there in the middle again? The creator. One create one one, one claims to be I'm related to the creator. And one claims that he, he is the creator. Right? But Haya is what breaks down. Even when we go into the Catholic encyclopedia, it says Yahweh is a derivative of Haya. Small little piece. It doesn't say Allah in the Catholic encyclopedia. When we go into, let me point this way, or <laughs> the fake Jews, them that say they are Jews and are not. Hmm? When we go into their writing, and we can see from real documents, excuse me, real definitions, real definitions, that they're commonites. These videos are up. 
con men. Come on, look around. I'm in Ohio, and I can see all these cons here. Now, I don't see fake Jews. I see the Asians. They open the doors for their brothers and sisters. I see all types of Asians. I see all types of Indians. I see all types of Arabs, East Indians and Arabs. Now, when you say Amorite, you sit there and point to an image of black people. And when I say Amorite, I point to a, a different name in an older book that says Emorite. Emorite. Now, when, when I point to an image of an Emorite, it's a person that actually says out of their own fucking mouth, United Emirate Airlines. <laughs> so who the fuck's right? So if the Emirates are the Canaanites and the other names linked to the Canaanites point to different looking people too, then there ain't no black Canaanites. And that means ham. Cham didn't have no black children. So when you start saying, Mizrahim, Egypt is black, you're fucking lying. Now, if you say, blacks overthrew the people in Egypt, well, that's a completely different story, isn't it? So, none of these groups link back to the creator's actual name. Even the fake Jews say his name is higher. That's, that's who you think wrote this, the Strong's Concordance. Who the fuck you think Strong's is? So it's a group of fake Jews trying to keep the record straight. Why do you think in the in 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 the, in the Jewish here? This is this, this, this a bust your ass open. I done told you fifty times in the Jewish encyclopedia. It tells you baptism is from Babylon. Who controlled Babylon? Canaanites, Arab Union. What's the Arab Union called today? United Emirates. You keep listening to these people that are getting paychecks to lie to you. Paychecks to lie to you. And that's where it gets to what's the point? And you know, it felt like, it felt like he who created us wanted me to see the point. And, and, and I mean, out of nowhere, I made that phone call and, and it just happened to be a time they were in Bible study. <laughs> Come on, man, you know, and, and to hear, you know, somebody say, this is what I learned and it's changed my life. Yeah, man. It does show. That, that what it's worth, you know. So when I got off, the, when, uh, when I was getting off the phone, you know what she said to me? She, she said, "Keep it real. Keep it real." Job a month ago and led us all the way to the Vatican. Anyway, go out there and decide for yourselves. I don't want. Yeah, you go out there and decide for yourselves. We're going to get back to oppression. The more of India, okay, the Negro of India. Because clearly the more or the Negro that came up out of India, we saw this in the past readings, India is full of what? Negroes. So they clearly know what they're talking about. So they're, they're oh boy.
Let me close this out. We got 10 minutes. This decree did not go unchallenged. Francis I, the first of France, for example, later quit. The sun shines on me as well as on others. I should be very happy to see the clause in Adam's, in Adam's will, which excluded me from my share when the world was being divided. Oh, shit. This decree did not go unchallenged. Francis I of France, for example, later quibbled. Quibbled or quibbled. I think that's quibbled. Crying. The sun shines on me as well as on others. I should be very happy to see the clause, the clause in Adam's. Now remember, fuck the French, right? The French people are not French people. The French, the hot, the French High Court, all white French people, right, deemed that French people cannot call themselves French people because they're not French people, right? Now remember, they're 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 Gaul. Rome fought them. Rome whooped their ass. They called Rome called them the the Gaul. Gaul is a short. You call me Alex, it's short for Alexander. Gaul is short for Galatians. Galatians is one of these books in the add-on, right? The fucking parasite, right? Now think about that. What, like locusts, they came over here and fucking ate everything, right? And then laid cement down on everything, right? Now the earth just tries to swallow their ass up randomly. Think about it. Like a parasite. Got to attach itself to what? A host. What does the scripture say about who's the host? Keep your vessel clean, right? Why would you have to keep you? So you can host something. You're the host, right? This is your house. You've heard it. What did, what did Malcolm X say? Your, you, you, your house, you got a guest and they, they, they never leave. Each time you go into these books about history, the ones that tell the truth, it says that the natives opened their arms to the people that came, and the people that came poisoned them. All right? Now, does this society purposely try to turn you gay? Yes or no? versus the natural law, what's written in the scripture, is that poison. These people, these colonists came over here and they used alcohol to try to trick you. Do we call alcohol poison? Make your own decisions. I'm just asking broad questions. The medical system. Writings keep coming out that the medical system is poisoning you so that you are hooked on pharmaceuticals so that you need to stay in the system. Poisoning's already in the sentence, right? They're poisoned, okay? So, so you can see the medical system take an oath to a, fall, a fallen angel called Apollyon, right? You got a search engine. You can look it up. See, this is my point. If you give a fuck, you're taking the extra effort. Right? So when you look at this stuff, who's poisoning what? You don't believe me? Okay, I'll take it much steps further. All right. Ask the white guy, is a white person from Africa, an African-American. Don't assume all blacks are African-American. There also, uh, there also are people who are from Africa, uh, who are African, Afro-Latino, Afro-European, Afro-Caribbean. Thank you for posting that. One of the best friends in high school was black, but he traced his ancestry back to France. It bothered him when someone referred to him as an African-American. On the flip side, one of my son's best friends in high school was born in America, but both his parents were born and raised in Africa. He could legitimately be called an African-American, but probably never will since all of them are Caucasian. Just goes to show you can't judge a book by its cover or person. 
by his or her color. And yes, I acknowledge that you posted a comment with positive sincerity. However, I agree with your first point, but not your second. And let's look at this. It says African American refers to descendants of enslaved black people who are from the United States, not from Africa. Now, I added that not from Africa, if you're listening and not watching, uh, viewing. I know some people put headphones in and, and go to work. So, again, I'll read this again. Afri African American refers to descendants of enslaved black people who are from the United States, period. The reason we use the entire continent Africa instead of a country, i.e. Italian-American, is because slave masters purposefully obliterated tribal ancestry, language, and family units in order to destroy the spirit of the people they enslave by making it impossible for their descendants to trace their history prior to being born into slavery. Because these people never plan to ever leave. And now look how they infest and invite the Canaanites back. Now, think. It's right there, right in front of your eyes. I'll read this again. African American refers to descendants of enslaved black people who are from the United States. The reason we use the entire continent is because the slave master purposefully obliterated tribal ancestry, language, and family units in order to destroy the spirit of the people they enslaved, whereby make it impossible for their descendants to ever, 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 I'm adding ever, to trace back their history prior to being born into slavery. This is all in effort to prevent enslaved people from organizing and revolting their bondage. What did you learn in the last video? I don't care if it's a month, I don't care if it's two months, you learned the problem that we have to overcome is unity. Our egos block us from uniting. And that is why society pushes you to be an individual. You're the man. You're the man. Go out and get your cheese. Encouraging you to be yourself. Do what thou wilt. Now you're talking witchcraft and you already know that shit. How many of you have a friend that's got the Jay-Z shirt, do what thou will? How many of you have the Jay-Z shirt, do what thou will? How many of you have yelled back to somebody, I'll do what the fuck I want? Now you see what we're doing. They've taught us. They've poisoned us us enforcing illiteracy of enslaved people by law <laughs> by law with severe penalties including in some cases death for teaching an enslaved person to write or to read so they would kill a white man for teaching a slave to be what? Equal. You can crawl, I can crawl. You can walk, I can walk. You've got eight fingers and opposable thumb, two opposable thumbs. I got eight fingers, two opposable thumbs.
now he can speak the same language and write the same ambassador. The problem is that the ambassador is only there for one of us since we're two different nations. You understand that? By law, the ambassador is there for only one nation, not two. <clears throat> See, so arguing for yourself, your individual, even though they taught you to be individual, arguing for yourself is a failure move against this nation. So you've got to argue for this nation to this nation. You cannot argue for your nation to this nation because they have stopped you from being a nation so that you can never organize or revolt because they are feeding off of us. When you go to the gas station, you're buying back your great, 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 great grandfather's oil. They didn't get this from other fucking countries. That's why there's holes opening up right here. That's why if you go to Texas, they're pumping today because the fucking oil's been here. Yeah, they got oil over there. But that's oil to supply on that side of the world. You go up to what? North of Texas, right up the line, they're pumping oil. Didn't they have a fucking cave in, in, in Oklahoma? Didn't the earth open up and swallow some shit? Every time the earth opens up. Remember, crude oil is thick. It's like a fucking cement pillar. And then you stick a straw in there and you suck that shit out. And then it's unstable ground. They know what the fuck they're doing. No. By law, with severe penalties, including death in some clear cases, for teaching a enslaved person to write and obliterating any sense of history or familial ties was a tradition, was a tradition in our country, starting in 1619, before the revolution and ending after the Civil War. That was a tradition. This is what your forefathers did. For what? For enjoyment, warmth, and bonding. And filth. Now, one can argue that this practice continues in the 20th century. Well, of course it does. That's how you, uh, what, keep, what do you call it? Oppression going, right? And what? Supremacy, right? Uh, this is why our African-American fellow citizens cannot trace their heritage past the continent of Africa. I don't understand that, co that comment right there. Um, maybe it should, just a suggestion, maybe it should say, this is why uh, 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 these people here cannot trace their, uh, you know, you know uh, heritage to Africa. Because, again, like, uh, none of my descendants are, 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 have any records of coming here on any kind of boat, you know. In fact, you know, like my, my family history doesn't go past the uh, 1850s, 1851. Um, and that's the end, that's, that's the end of the... Uh, war with their quote, quote unquote Indians, you know. So, you know, I'll reemphasize this point. Their personal and family history was purposefully obliterated by people who enslaved other people. For purpose of respect, as well as providing context 
to the current day events and economic realities, it is important to acknowledge and understand this part of American history. America is unique in having people who are African American. For this personal insight into what all this means, I suggest you read Frederick Douglass' autobiography, My Bondage and My Freedom. In addition to learning history in, every, in a very real and first person way, you'll also learn things about our language. For example, the bone chilling origin of the common phrase, sold down the river. For an outstanding overview of the repercussions of slavery in modern day in, in the modern day era, I most strongly recommend Michelle Alexander's recent book, The New Jim Crow. In the case of your son's friend, post-slavery images, uh, immigrants, excuse me, uh, from a country in Africa can readily identify themselves by where they came from. It's on their passports. Black immigrants from Africa can identify themselves by country and tribe. Keep in mind that, <clears throat> that country boundaries in Africa are chiefly colonial constructs. constructs. No, just placed there by colonization. Only discussed in colonized regions. Only respected in those regions. So if you go to Africa, most Africans do not respect the idea that they are an African or live in Africa. You understand what I'm saying? Most people that want to be Americanized or, or have been colonialized, no matter what skin color they are. See, that's why you have Africans that are in Africa and learn English. Some of the first things that they would most likely learn is, you are an African. And they'd be like, oh, do you know we are Africans? <laughs> <laughs> why was why is that because okay now it's the european standard right the european model and if you want to play in the society of europe you have to go by when in rome right even though we're not in rome we're just going by the rules of people who have taken the laws out of rome and administer them in their society today so, says, uh, black migrants from Africa can identify themselves by country and, keep tr and, and, and tribe. Keep in mind that country boundaries in Africa are chiefly colonial constructs. A modern day migrant from Africa may refer to him herself by a hyphenated identity. Uh, Sudanese American, for example. Okay, so I need you to understand something. Now, do you see the migration of Africans coming here to America? Right? Now, if you drive down the highway long enough, you're going to see these giant gaps of just wilderness, nothingness, right? And it completely shows that, you know, in this land, the promised land, there's room for, to expand. And technically, in this land, if we got food from somewhere else, we could probably fit everybody in the world in uh, from up and down North, North, Middle, and South America. We could probably fit everybody in the world on this side of, 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 of the fat, flat plain, right? <clears throat> They're over there in the east, right? And we're over here in the west, right? Sunrise is over there, right? Mm, yeah, whatever. So... I want you to keep this in mind. You don't see people migrating to Africa, really. What you see is something happening in Africa, same thing that happened here in America before, something happening in Africa that's making all the Africans, what, migrate, what, out of there, whether they're heading to Europe first and then being sent here or just heading over here directly. On the other hand, you do not see an exodus of Americans going there, you see an exodus of Africans coming here. Now, again, you have to ask yourself, if Egypt's over there and you believe that 
you know, you know, you're black, you know, you're black Egyptian, you know, and, and, and you want to go back home, then why isn't the exodus happening here and going there? Why is it there and coming here? Well, because this is where it happened. See, that's Noah's Ark landed over there, but this is where the Dispoisers all led us to. This is where we fought the Canaanites, the colonites. Most people, they're just, they're just not going to see it. They're not going to respect the books that, that it's written in. A special note for people who email me about their white ancestors who were enslaved. Virginia codified, uh, codified slave laws to be exclusive to black people in 1705. Now, if you don't understand what that means, Washington, D.C., uh, actually, the nation's capital started in Virginia. So, so laws came out of Virginia back then. So, law made it slavery exclusive to blacks, establishing white supremacy. Now, you understand? And indentured servitude was ended in the 1800s. You can work for me for a payment right now. Comparing indentured servitude of white people to the history of African Americans is insulting to this author's opinion. And they won't entertain it in this publication. Now, understand the people that control you, they control your mind, they control your children's mind, so much so that the words that we use are completely different from their original definitions. Don't believe me? I'll prove it. Black people, seen both capitalized and with lowercase b, is a term used in certain countries, often in social-based systems of racial classification or of ethnicity to describe persons who are perceived to be dark-skinned compared to other given populations, such as the meaning of the expression varies widely both between and within societies and depending significantly on the context. For many other individuals, communities, and countries, black is also perceived as derogatory, outdated, reductive, and otherwise unrepresentative unre label, an unrepresentative label. Black, meaning you do not have a representative, you do not have a delegate, you do not have a king, you do not have a president, you have nothing. You are actually, what, attached to what? A parasite, and the parasite has fucked your mind so much it's leading you. They shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Okay, does it all make sense now? It's like a child poem, and we couldn't, we can't even see it that way. All these people telling you that, you know, they're the head, and you're the tail, and you refuse to just separate from the body. You got to go to their their stores if you're gonna eat. You're not getting your food from nature the way that the Lord gave it to you. People say you don't have to leave, but I don't know. You still got to make money to pay the rent. You still got to do this, you still got to do that. All right? All right. Different societies apply different criteria regarding who is classified as black. And these social constructs have what also changed over time okay you know society in florida is not the same as society in, in cleveland right so it doesn't necessarily mean they're talking about different places in the world 
It just says different societies. Society in Texas is different than society in Maine. They get different plants, different, right? Different foods. One eats a lot of bull, the other eats a lot of what? Uh, 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 clam. You know? So just think about this. In a number of countries, yeah, we read that, right? For example, in North America, the term black people is not necessarily an indicator of color or ethnic origin. What? Did you, you see, did you see it? it just said in North America, right? Now, who the fuck do you call, you live in North America, who the fuck do you call black that ain't black? Now, even by me saying that, that would mean a standard of black people being Afro-Asian, right? You know, because, right? So, so, now, listen to what the white man has done again. See, listen, let me explain white supremacy real quick. All right, oh, that's right. You already know what white supremacy is. Okay, let me explain control and white supremacy. If we're on the chessboard and, and you say, okay, I'm going to be on the chessboard with you and I'm fighting against you and they say white power and you say black power and they say white power and, they, and you say black power, remember they control your schools and education. Now they control who's black and who's not. Now you can't control who's, who's black and who's white. But this is the object of control, right? Now, this is what it's like to control something, right? You have control over something. You have control over your car, your, your personal vehicle. You have control over your refrigerator, right? Have you ever thought about controlling populations in terms of race? Mm -hmm. No, you have no idea about no, The megalomaniac sits around fucking... For example, in North America, the term black people is not necessarily an indicator of skin color or ethnic origin. Bullshit. It actually is. I live in North America. I see it every day. You can kiss my black ass. Fuck your black boy. I have to come home, man. But it is instead a socially based racial classification related to being African American. I call bullshit. With a family history mainly associated with institutionalized slavery. You understand that at all? Okay. In the United Kingdom, black was historically equivalent with person of color. In general term, for non-European peoples, in South Africa and Latin American, mixed race people are generally not classified as black. In other regions, such as Australia, settlers applied the term black, or it was used by the local populations with different histories and ancestral backgrounds. Now, each of these have, you know, different contexts when you go down here. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I, I need you to understand what they're saying. You know, and, and if you don't understand what they're saying, I'll just, uh, I'll go over here. And this is the Yahoo page, right? And when I clicked on Yahoo, I tell you, uh, you know, when we type in it, you know, it doesn't even say. Anyway, I think it was black people. But here it says black people. And it says, blah, 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 seen poor whites are considered black and wealthy blacks are considered white. Now, did you know this? Now, we're talking about in America. Now, uh, of course, most of us have seen the article where the black man from Egypt came out and they label him white because he was, quote unquote, successful. But the only news report was about an African being labeled white with black skin. I've never seen that here in America, yet this is written as if it's it's just the status quo. 
See, and this is what I mean, the, to, the power to change who, you're, who can be your enemy. <laughs> well, we oppress black people. Well, we enslave black people. Okay, so anybody that grows up in the next 15 years under this definition will think that poor whites were enslaved as well, right? So our future generations, right, that still attempt to go to court and fight against the oppressor would never see reparations or any type of repair of the damage that has been done to their families or any restitution, the repair that's been done to their family. would never see anything like that because the mindset of future generations will be that this never happened, that these people were always here. This is why when they make a statue of Dr. Martin Luther King, Junior. And they place it in the nation's capital. They make it in white. Oh, it looked like him, but it doesn't quite resemble him for some reason. I really can't put my finger on it. Hmm. Now, think about white power. They turned one of the greatest black leaders. Now, it doesn't matter if you agree with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or not. It doesn't matter if you don't know much about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or not, because that's your fault. It doesn't matter if you don't know one of the last things that he said on film was he was wrong. It doesn't matter. All you have to know is that he was one of the top five greatest leaders of the so-called black man. Now look at the statue. Look how big the statue, it's a gigantic statue. But what does it represent? When you look at it, does it represent King? His plight, his fight, his fight for his people? Or does it immediately make you think white? You're born in the same society that I do. I am. Black and white. Now, look at how well designed this is. The white man's giant rod. Washington. Right? And the big statue of the white, the white man's trophy. You know what this is, right? You have no fucking clue what this is. I'm going to show you. You do not respect imagery. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. On a galactic level. You think I'm bullshitting, don't you? Those of you that got goosebumps right now, you know. When he died, the movement was stopped in stone, right? You can't move a mountain, but you can plow right through it. That is the power of the white man. We're looking for Zion, and they are too, so they can try to plow right through it. 
Think about it, man. I'm not playing with you. What does this character mean to these people? Hmm? What does this character mean to you people? Hmm? Movement stopped like stone. So, Nilothic, Nihilistic, Nihilistic. I see Lot's name right there. L O T. Why? Why L O N T? Because Lot went to live in the land of Canaan. And Lot had children, and they were with his daughters. Because of Sodom and Gomorrah, the whole West has been turned into a fucking desert. And, and you're asking where the five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are. And it's right there in the fucking four corners. And then the four corners are divided into a Roman Catholic fucking cross to say what? That's the fucking spot, right? Come on, people. People. The greatest researchers that have been putting it right back in your face both of them, King Andrus and Find the Truth, both of them use what? Google Earth to show you everything in Deuteronomy points right to Utah. In New Mexico, you got the, the Ten Commandments that, that would have been written by the, uh, the name start with S. I can't remember. Once Tigler Pills with move those people in. Right? It's written in the style of the people that Tigler Pills with moved in. Read, hey man, I ain't got to tell you to read it. I just do it because I don't trust that you do it. No offense because I can't see your face. It's just that I just feel this way about everything. Uh, so when you go to the Ten Commandments, don't. They're called Decalogue Stones. Dick a lot like catalog dick a lot. Is it O U G? Yeah. O G O U, right? Log Decalogue Stones. Um, and we're two in the Los. So there's only two stones. If you've purchased a shirt, you you know this information. You talk about it with people when you wear the shirts because they're like, oh wait. Right? Los Lunas. Right? And you click on this Decalogue Stone. Scroll down to Controversy. Cyrus Gordon has proposed that it's Sumerian. Alright? Samaritan. <laughs> Samaritan. Alright? So that proves, that stone actually proves the Samaritan boundary. After Tiglath Pilsler moved in, of the twelve tri uh, the ten tribes getting carried off. That's what people do not respect. But it's right there. The one in Ohio does what? It proves the image of Moses. This is why people wear turbans. People wear turbans to make it look like they got a freaking afro. You got an afro naturally. You ever see the images of black Jesus, right? Their, their claim on the black Jesus, right? Baby, 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 black Jesus. Oh, you know I'm going for that one. Okay. Now. See, this shit is what I'm looking for, all right? Not a ring that they put around the hair. The ring that goes around the hair has to do with an afro. 
okay? I have to do it in afro. You ever see somebody with an afro stand with a light behind their hair and they make this image come through their hair and then through the afro you can see their lower hair and what I mean by their lower hair is the hair closest to their head make an image in the afro like they got short hair I see it because, again, I have an afro and I've seen myself with light behind my head. This is why they always draw Jesus. Now, you see how they draw this way? And they don't draw the light. They draw the light coming from behind him. They draw the light just as I previously described, right? And that's why they put this behind this guy. Now, imagine, right? Ain't that the ring like he's an afro? Even though it's a white image, that's what it's about. Now I'll go up and I'll tight I'll take out baby. Cause even though they ain't showing me oh there's a baby. There's the only baby. Now you see how right here? That's the light coming from behind him. They don't got an afro on him like they got on this little baby. Right? They just don't have that image there. Now and see this image of this stuff is just and that's it's, it's a big fuck you in the face. That's what it has, you know. It's, it has to do with man, because there is no, no, there is no Jesus. There's, there's Emmanuel, the child that will be born, that will be a sign, right? And this is more so the kind of image I'm talking about, because it has to do with the Afro being seen through. You can't really get an image of it, but. Oh well, sometimes I just say things that just won't make sense to you. This is close to the image. But again, this again is just image. <laughs> you know, look at how all these people that have all these beliefs chase the images, even though the first thing that the Lord says is, Thou shalt not, what? Deal with images. All right, so. Neolithic, Neolithic lot, all right, remember, lot, and that has to do with what, it has to do with the people of Moab, what is the desert in Utah called, Moab Desert, right, that's showing who owned it previously, right, that's, that's Lot's children's desert, somewhere in that desert, you probably find their mom as a pillar of salt. Neolithic peoples are peoples indigenous to the Nile Valley that speak Neolithic languages, which comprise a large subgroup of Nilo Saharan languages spoken in South Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, and Northern Tasmania. In a more general sense, the Neolithic peoples include all descendants of the original. Nilo Saharan speakers. Among these are the Lu Sahara Magi Ma, Masai, the Kalajan, the Dinka, the Nua, the Shaluk, Shil, Shiluk, the Atya, and the Ma speaking peoples, which each of which is a cluster of several ethnic groups. Nilots <laughs> form the majority of populations in South Sudan and an area that is believed to be their origin point of dispersal. They also constitute the second largest group of peoples inhabiting the African Great Lakes region after the Banta people, I guess that's the, they're the second largest, the Bantu people are the largest, um, with a notable presence in the southwestern Ethiopia as well. Nilots primarily adhere to Christianity and traditional faiths, including Dika religion. Uh, Nilothic and Nilot are previously used 
as subrace classifications, including anthrop anthropological observations of the distinct body morphology of many Neolithic speakers. These concepts were later widely discarded in 20th century social bias, bias 20th century social scientists, but today are again find support in population genetics. These terms are now mainly used to distinguish Neolithic people based on ethnic linguistic affiliation etymology. The term Neolithic and Neolithite Nilote, excuse me, Nilote, not Nilotite, Nilote. Singular Nilot derived from the Nile Valley, specifically the Upper Nile and its boundaries, where most Sudanese Nilo Saharan speaking people live. Now, I'll make this very clear. I'm going to highlight Sudanese. And I'm going to give you a fair example. Now, how many people know what Sudanese people look like? All right, there you go. Now, yes or no question. Each person viewing has their own distinct image. Do the Sudanese people look like you? Yes or no? Obviously, you can see my image. These people look nothing like me. This makes me realize I'm not part of them. Now, when we go down to Ethiopian people. Now, when you look at these people, they look like two different groups. Some of these people kind of look like you, kind of look like me, but a lot of these people don't. This person looks like a Sudanese person, yet they call him Ethiopian. So it is very hard to distinguish based on the mating practices of history. However these people looked in the beginning of history, these Ethiopians, you looked very close to them. However these people looked the Sudanese people, you don't really look like them. So even though we're all considered black people because of black skin, we are not all Neolithic people. Over here we have a different term for us, and we'll get into that a little bit later.